Hello, and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to uh, take care of some practice problems involving three ways to prove triangles congruent. Very exciting, as I think this is the first time we're going to do a little bit more of a lengthy proof uh, as part of the process of the practice for some of these problems. So two problems, one is a proof, and one is more of a coordinate proof, but we'll just tackle that straight up and I'll go through it just verbally. Okay, first question. I've got, <laughs> I gave you the answer and then I stopped. Okay, so first question is, uh, or the first proof is that we're given, we have two triangles here, AED and ABC, and we're trying to prove that the two triangles ABC and AED are gonna be congruent. Now the first thing that you always want to do is draw the diagram. Typically the diagram is given in the book, so you want to draw that out. Just recopy it from the book, put it onto your piece of paper right next to your two column proof and statements and reasons. Very important to have that visual in front of you and to go through the process of drawing it because you really want to interact with the diagram as you uh, prove or attempt to prove that the two triangles are going to be congruent. In whatever case, whatever the book is asking you to prove, you want to have the figures out so you can start to interact with the figures themselves. So what we're going to do now after we've drawn these two figures is we're going to mark up the diagram with the givens. So I know that AB is congruent to AE. AB is congruent to AE. So I'm going to mark this up. AB congruent to AE. So I can see visually that AB and AE have the same length. Then we uh, are told that AE and AC, Ray AE and AC, are going to trisect BAD. Well, what does that mean? That means that angle BAE and angle EAC and angle CAD are all going to be congruent. So I'll make two more tick marks for each of these. I've got DAC, CAE, and EAB all congruent to each other. And then finally, we're told that uh, AE, segment AE, is perpendicular to DE. So I'm going to draw in my box here, which says that I've got a right angle. And then I'm going to, I know that angle A, or I'm sorry, that side AB is perpendicular to BC. So I draw in my triangle here. Okay, so now I want to figure out, um, my goal is to figure out that ABC is congruent to AED. And I want to think to the three theorems that we learned about in uh, the lesson are the three postulates that help me to prove that uh, th that two triangles are going to be congruent. And the three that we had were the side 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 postulate, the side angle side postulate, and the angle side angle postulate. So if I have three sides, three corresponding sides that are congruent, then I have two congruent triangles. If I have a side, an included angle and a side uh, that are congruent between two triangles, then the triangles are congruent. If I have an angle, an included side and an angle that are congruent between two corresponding triangles, then I have two congruent triangles. So let's take a look at what we have. Well, we have an angle here. We've got an angle, which is the right angle. And then we have a side. And then we need to figure out if we have another angle here. And it looks like we do. I think we can probably play around with this to get the two angles uh, DAE to be congruent to BAC. Okay, so let's walk through the proof step by step, given the diagram as marked up, and let's see what we can come up with. So first we're going to say that AB is congruent to AE. So we've already, this is part of the givens, so segment AB congruent to AE. Then we're going to say that AE is perpendicular to DE, and AB is perpendicular to BC, and that's also a given. Okay, so now we have a side, at least a side, two corresponding sides that are congruent. And we say that angle B and angle E are right angles. That's the definition of perpendicular lines. And then the statement angle B and E are congruent, and we give as a reason if angles are right angles, then they are congruent. So now we have uh, two angles, angle B and angle E, which are congruent. Then we have two sides, AB and AE, which are congruent. Now all we need in order to prove that the two triangles are congruent by angle side angle is that BAC is congruent to EAD. Well, we know we're given that these three angles that have the tick marks on them are all congruent. 
Okay, so if they're all congruent, then I know that this middle angle here, if I add that middle angle to the two, one of the two side angles, then the sums are going to be congruent. So if I add angle EAC to angle BAE, then that angle, the sum of that angle is going to be the same as if I add angle EAC to angle CAD. Okay, so I, I go back to the givens and I say AE and AC trisect BAD. And then that means that, and that's a given, that angles BAE, EAC, CAD are all congruent. That's the definition of trisected angles. Okay. So angle BAC is congruent to angle EAD. And I say that because I can add BAE is the sum, BAC is the sum of BAE plus EAC and EAD is the sum of EAC plus angle CAD. So the two are congruent because if an angle EAC, which is congruent to itself, is added to congruent angles, BAE and CAD, then their sums are congruent. So now I can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to angle AED by angle side angle, and all I have to do is write ASA, I don't have to write ASA postulate, and then I identify the values or the uh, reasons by number that correspond to the given angle, side, and angle. So in this case, it really should be 417. But you can write it in any order. You can be sequential or by the given angle, side, and angle. So 147, 417, just identify uh, the parts of the angle, side, angle postulate uh, proof that tells us that we have, in fact, shown that the angle, the included side, and uh, the angle are all congruent between the two corresponding angles. Okay, let's move on. Second question for you. Uh, we're going to consider two triangles, uh, ABC and FDE, with vertices uh, 0, 7, negative 4, 0, 0 for A, B, and C, respectively, 2, 3, 2, negative 1, and 9, negative 1 for D, E, F, respectively. And the question is asking us to draw a diagram and explain why triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FDE. All right, well, we have, again, three postulates that we talked about. We've got side, side, side. We have side, angle, side. And we have angle, side, angle. Uh, now, we can go through the process uh, using some more advanced math to figure out uh, that the triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. But we can also prove a little bit more simply that the triangles are congruent by side, 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 or by side, angle, side, which I think is the easiest way to go in this case. So <clears throat> let's talk about the angles first. Well, we know that if we just take a look at the diagram, we have uh, BC, 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 so I have negative 4, 0. B is negative 4, 0 and C is 0, 0. So we see there's no change along the x-axis. So it's four, negative 4, 0 to 0, 0. The line BC, the segment BC, goes right along the x-axis. Then I have A, which is at 0, 7. And again, C, which is at the origin 0, 0. I have no change along the y-axis. So I can tell here that AB is going to be perpendicular to BC. So I draw in my box to identify that they're perpendicular. So I know that these two angles, or this angle ACB is going to be a right angle. So ACB is a right angle. Okay. Then I do the same thing for DEF. Okay. Uh, and in this case, I know that DE, there's no change along uh, for the X value. So it's running this line or the segment is vertical. Uh, and is also parallel to the y-axis. And then EF, again, has no change along the y-axis or the y-coordinates because the y-coordinates stay the same. So I know, again, that this is a right angle. DE is perpendicular to EF. So DEF is a right angle. Okay, so I have these two angles are congruent. Angle E and angle C are congruent to each other. Now I can figure out the length of AC. AC is simply seven units. There's no change in the X value, just a change in the Y value. So AC, I'm going to say, is equal to seven. EF, there's no change in the 
y-axis, e goes from 2, negative 1, to 9, negative 1, my difference is going to be 7 units. Okay, so now I know that EF, segment EF, is congruent uh, to segment AC because they both have the same measure, which is 7 units. Now I take a look at BC and DE. BC just runs 4 units along the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. So BC is 4, and DE runs 4 units, again, from 3 to negative 1. So I know that these are both 4 units, DE and BC. So DE is 4 units, BC is 4 units. So DE is congruent to BC. So now I can say by angle side angle that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FDE because I have an angle, uh, which we'll say angle E is congruent to angle C. So angle E is congruent to angle C. And see, they're in the same spot. So again, we have to make sure that the letters, the vertices, are lined up properly between the two corresponding congruent angles. And then I know that EF is congruent to AC. So EF is congruent to AC. And then DE is congruent to BC. So DE is congruent to BC. So in fact, through angle side angle, I can prove that triangle ABC is congruent to FDE. Now, we can also use the distance formula, which we haven't learned, to show that AB is going to be the same length as DF. So what is the distance formula? Well, it's just the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of the differences between the x values. So in this case, it's going to be negative 4, 0. So my difference is going to be 4, and then we're going to square it. And then we're going to add the difference in the y values. So I go from 7 to 0. My difference is going to be uh, 7 squared. And I take the square root of that. So I have 16 plus 49 to be the square root of 65. That's the length of AB. And I can do the same thing for DF. If I say, <clears throat> what's the length of DF? It's just the square root of the difference between the X and Y values in D and F. So D is 2, 3, and F is 9, 1. So the difference between the X values is going to be 7. So 7 squared plus the difference between the y values, 3 minus minus 1, 4 squared. And you can see already that we have two similar or equal lengths. So I end up with df equal to the square root of 65. Now, we haven't quite covered the distance formula yet, but I want to show you also that another simple way of proving these two triangles is congruent is by side, side, side. Now, in this case, we have a, b, which is uh, square root of 65 units, and df, also the square root of 65 units, congruent to each other by proving they're congruent from the distance formula.